Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build a jewel thief. Now, if you don't know what a jewel thief is, it's pretty much just a circuit that uh, takes the voltage of a one and a half volt battery, single cell like this, and it boosts it up enough to light up an LED. Uh, so basically, you're going from about one and a half volts to three volts, and this ends up making a boost converter. Uh, it's unregulated, and the uh, LED is just kind of stuck across the output. But uh, anyway, uh, the name Jewel Thief is kind of a pun because it's spelled J-O-U-L-E. And the reason why is because this thing will run off of really low or completely, not completely dead batteries, but uh, ones that have been used quite a bit and can't be used in a normal appliance anymore. So can take them out and use them to light up an LED for a few hours or something like that so anyway uh, usually when you're talking about a jewel thief this is the typical circuit that comes to mind uh, with a NPN transistor here I have a 2N2222 that's what I put in the schematic here and I realize this is actually multiple battery cells over here but that's all I could find in the program that I used to make this but it is supposed to be just a single uh, one and a half volt cell like I put on here. Uh, this resistor can actually vary quite a bit and if you want to have some fun you can experiment uh, with different resistances. Uh, of course you don't want to have this completely shorted out to the transistor because that will blow it up uh, in short order. But usually the lower the resistance the brighter it gets to a certain point and then it starts getting dimmer and just draws a lot more current. Uh, but anyway. I'll show you how to make this transformer. Uh, usually you use these ferrite toroids here, these little ring things. And this is a fairly small one. They come in different sizes. There's ones, uh, there's ones that are bigger than this. Sometimes they'll be like uh, a blue co color and uh, encased in plastic instead of just bare like this. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to use this little one today. I'm also going to show you how to do it with a uh, PNP transistor. Uh, in case you ever need to do that and this will work with any color of LED as long as it's just a standard single chip one that only takes like three volts or two volts or whatever. Uh, I have some of these things you can actually run a whole bunch of LEDs in series if you can get the voltage coming out of this high enough. Uh, but anyway, it's a fairly simple circuit. You have one side of the uh, transformer is essentially what this is going into a 1k resistor and that goes into the base of the transistor here and then the trans transistor is simply switching the current on and off at this point uh, or the current that flows through this winding of that transformer so this winding ends up just being a feedback loop and then what happens here is when this turns off you get a very high voltage spike that comes out of this uh, inductor and then that feeds through your LED and lights it up. So anyway, this is what a normal one would look like uh, with an NPN transistor. I also have a schematic for if you're using a PNP transistor, so I have a 2N3906 here. And it's actually really easy. I'll show you how you can switch this over, but that's what the schematic looks like if you're curious. Uh, but I'm going to build up my uh, little jewel thief here on a little mini breadboard. And I've got the 1K resistor, little uh, ferrite thing. I'll grab an LED here, and I've just picked some random, uh, most certainly not fully charged Duracell AAA. And this will work with AAAs, AA's, C's, D's, uh, anything that puts off one and a half volts, pretty much. So, anyway, uh, and I'm using 26 gauge magnet wire, mainly because I'm using this little tiny toroid. I want this wire to actually be able to fit into it. Uh, if you're using a larger toroid, you can just use standard, uh, uh, like insulated wire that has the. Uh, the plastic type insulation like what this has here uh, but anyway I'm going to use the magnet wire because I've got a bunch of it and might as well because this is actually what it's meant for so anyway you're going to kind of have to judge the amount of wire you need for yourself because it's going to depend on your toroid if you have a bigger toroid it's going to take more wire 
If you have a smaller one, it's not going to take nearly as much wire. So, uh, in starting the build process here, I'll go ahead and get these schematics out of the way. I'll go ahead and unspool some of this. And it's probably not going to take very much here, maybe a foot and a half or so. And I realize it's going to be hard to see because this is such a long shot. But I have it bent over in half on this side. Then on this side, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. About right there. So now I have a piece of wire. It's about a foot and a half uh, well, in total, it might be about three feet long, but it's about a foot and a half on each side. And usually, what I'll do with this is I'll bring both ends so they're even. And then come down here, keeping them even this entire time, and then just put a bend in this end. Now optionally, one of the things that you can do to make this a little bit easier is if you take a drill and you stick the uh, wire into the chuck of the drill. This might be a little bit tricky because it's tiny wire and it's a this is meant to hold a drill bit, not a tiny piece of wire. Alright, so I've got that piece of wire in here. Uh, don't worry about damaging the end of this. We have to uh, strip that insulation off later anyway. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the other end of that wire with a pair of pliers. So I'll just kind of bring the ends even and hold on to this. And stretch the whole thing out here. And I want to get them so that they're pulled evenly. And then we're just going to twist these wires together. Just about like that. So anyway, that just makes it a little bit easier to wind that toroid, especially when you're dealing with a small toroid like this. And of course, the quickest and easiest way to do that is just to spin it with a drill. Um, and it makes a really nice, tight, uh, twisted pair, essentially. That's what we have here now. So anyway, I'll go ahead and take this out of the drill, and we will start winding the uh, toroid. All right, so usually... Uh, the end that we did not cut, that end I will wrap through the toroid and that just makes it easier because you don't have uh, the ends and two separate wires trying to get into the toroid. It's just easier if you start with this end, probably about like that. You want to leave plenty of wire to uh, mess with and then this is fairly simple. You just thread the wire through the little loop here. And you're basically just going to do that until you run out of wire or you run out of space on the toroid. All right, so that's about as much wire as I want to put on there. Uh, the, the ends are pretty much even. It's close enough, but uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is cut this little loop that we had from before. I'll just cut it off like that. And we'll untwist it a little bit so I can actually get to the wires. Something like that. Yeah, on the other end as well. And I'll go ahead and cut these off so that they're even. Just a little bit off. And then have the same amount of wire on both sides as well. Alright, so uh, you can strip this magnet wire in a few different ways. Uh, I usually like to take a little piece of emery cloth here or sandpaper. 
and you just go over it a couple times with this and that will take off that enamel insulation that they put on this type of wire. Uh, of course, if you're just using a normal wire with plastic insulation, just strip the ends of that off. So, I've heard of people burning this stuff off too, but really that just stinks and it doesn't even work all that well in my experience with it. And some of this stuff you can actually just put solder straight onto and it'll burn off on its own. But, uh, for me, I found this to be pretty much the easiest method. It just takes a few swipes with the uh, sandpaper here. Alright, so the ends of the wire are stripped there. So now, uh, we have to figure out which wire actually gets connected together. Because if you notice on the schematic, you have two wires that end up going to the same point. Uh, so that's what we're going to set up right now. And the easiest way to do this is just to take a multimeter, set it to continuity, and should beep when I touch the probe together. There we go. Now, on one side of this toroid I have one end of the wires and on the other side of this toroid I have the other end of the wires. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to touch one of the probes to one of the wires on this side. I'm going to touch one of the probes to one of the wires on this side. Alright, so that piece of wire that piece of wire here and then the uh, the piece of wire that the probe is touching are the same piece of wire. So if I touch the probe to this one, I shouldn't get them uh, to beep like that. And the ones that are not connected are the ones that you want to twist together. Here, so usually the way I will do this is just twist it together and I like to put a little bit of solder on them but you don't really have to and now if you check this again you should be able to put the probe on there and then on the other two wires there should be a connection to both of them so if I touch this wire it should beep, if I touch this wire it should also beep all right, so I'll go ahead and move on to the wiring of one of these things. Uh, so I'm going to start with the NPN transistor, then I'll move on to the PNP transistor. So uh, anyway, we're going to start with a 2N2222A, I think is what this is. And then uh, this would work with the 2N3904 transistor just as well. Uh, but I'll show you how to use a 2N3906 as well, which is a PNP transistor, which is just basically the same thing, but it's uh, the other way around. And I'll explain that in a minute. So I'll stick the transistor in there. We'll put uh, this toroid or our little transformer into one of these points on the breadboard. Now, the... Uh, the wires that I twisted together earlier on this little uh, transformer here, those are actually going to go to the positive connection of the battery. Then the one of these wires, one of the single wires coming out of this transformer is going to go on to the collector of the transistor, which in this case is the uh, far right pin on that. And another one of these wires is just going to kind of go off onto the breadboard over here. We'll go there and then the one that's off on its own on the breadboard is going to get hooked up through the 1k resistor is the 1k is usually what you see in the schematics for these things but it can be just about anything um, it's kind of fun to experiment with the different resistance values that you can put in one of these things uh, but anyway the LED the positive side will go onto the collector the negative side goes onto the emitter and then the ground of the battery goes on to the emitter of the transistor here. This is the far left pin in this case. So anyway, that's how that looks. Uh, it's a fairly simple circuit. We'll go ahead and 
hook up the battery to this and just a little tip here if you have some neodymium magnets laying around uh, you can actually use those uh, to easily connect to a battery so like taping contacts onto it or something like that uh, but anyway you can stick these breadboard jumper wires straight to the battery it's actually pretty handy but as you can see our little circuit turned on it's actually fairly bright uh, if I point this at the ground here, you can see that, and this is with the window open and getting as much light in here as I possibly can for the video. Uh, but anyway, you can see how bright that is. It's actually fairly impressive that you can do that off of uh, not even full uh, AAA cell. Let's see how much uh, voltage this actually has in it. It's probably not going to be a lot, but let's see. Yeah, so that's less than one volt in that battery. 0 0.98 or 0 0.93 volts and actually dropping fairly quickly. Uh, so yeah, that battery's pretty dead. Not a whole lot of things would want to run off of that. And this may not run for all that long, but hey, if you have light for a half an hour or something off of a dead battery that you're just going to throw away anyway, uh, it's probably not too bad. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to modify this circuit to work with a PNP transistor, which is actually fairly easy. Uh, first thing it will do is I'll pull out the LED and spin it around. And then the power supply wires get flipped. So you have the positive coming into the emitter and then the negative goes to the uh, transformer. And then all we have to do is pull this transistor out and I see that the battery's already decided to reconnect itself. but Anyway, we'll pull that transistor out and plug this one in. And there we go. We have the same lit up uh, LED off of the PNP transistor instead of an NPN one. So anyway, that's just a little tip there. You can use either type of uh, bipolar junction transistor, either PNP or NPN. Uh, they both work the same. just have to uh, modify your circuit just a little bit. Uh, but anyway... That's how that works. Uh, one little side note here is that that LED is not actually on constantly. It is pulsing on and off really quickly. And if I shake this around, uh, no, you can't really see it, I'm afraid. Well, I can't see it anyway with my eyes. The camera might be picking it up. Uh, but anyway, it is actually pulsing on and off really quickly. Uh, like I said before, the transistor switches this coil on and off, which uh, ends up giving it very high voltage spikes into the LED, which uh, actually fairly high current spikes as well, probably about 50 milliamps or so, depending on the jewel thief. I might go and do a separate video uh, investigating that, but uh, it's kind of hard on your LED, but it doesn't really make a difference uh, to it. They don't usually seem to mind that. Uh, some LEDs have peak current ratings too. I think these LEDs are rated to have a peak, a peak current of 30 milliamps and a continuous current of uh, 20. But anyway, it's still a pretty bright uh, light anyway, even if it is flashing on and off. Um, but that's just how these uh, boost converters work. And this is essentially, uh, I think the technical term for something like this is a self-oscillating boost converter. Uh, because the thing runs itself and there's no uh, active, well there is an active chip here, that transistor is an active part, but there's no controller chip for a boost converter or anything like that. Now if you're wondering where you can get these parts at, uh, the battery is pretty self-explanatory. These toroids, you can actually get these uh, out of like printers, radios, there's just different uh, electronics. Uh, devices a lot of times uh, big switch mode power supplies like computer power supplies will have these things in them as filters uh, and this this particular one here I pulled out of a uh, fax machine uh, I think the one on here was actually a bot part at one time that I somehow got um, uh, yeah you can buy these little toroids online uh, you can buy LEDs online you can buy transistors online and you can get uh, the resistors online as well if you want to uh, but a lot of times you can salvage these parts from different things all right guys uh hopefully you found this little video on how to make jewel thieves useful that's it for now guys bye